Hi, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing, and today let's talk about pigment degradation and use methyl orange, one of the colors that we can find in our palette, as a way to define why that happens. Hopefully you're ready for this. All right. <laughs> Now we're back after that stuff. I don't know about the title card. I thought it was funny because there was some random hillbilly stuffs going on. And I figure that this is kind of, you know, oh, I'm in a grouch and shit, you know, might as well. Anyways, pigment degradation. So we've been having a lot of people talking about, oh my gosh, what is going on with pigment? Why isn't it safe? And uh, the reason why, I mean, for a few, there's a few reasons why, but I mean, like one big thing is that we're going to see colors just fading, right? And degradation is usually going to be caused by interactions with light. And when we have, well, this one's like dead, dead. When we have a product that is known to make some really, really, really amazing colors available, some brand product line, whatever. And, uh, those colors seem to just disappear when they're in the body for a period of time there's always questions being asked like why is this happening i mean we've known for a long time in tattooing which i know the majority of people have not been tattooing for a long time that orange specifically it, some browns as well is one of those colors that just does not last and it's because of how the actual chromophore inside of the pigment is uh, going to interact with its environment. Uh, chromophore is just an aspect of a molecule that interacts with light energy and uh, through excitation of particles interacting with it, escapes an electron at a specific energy level that produces a wavelength of light. Fun. Okay, so when we take something like methyl orange, what happens is the sun interacts with it, and where we have this double bond at the center of it here, man, I gotta grab a different marker while we're doing this. What happens is it ends up getting excited, and it outputs a wavelength of color. With this one, it is orange, right? So we know through basic color theory what happens with a color is a color is equal to what is not absorbed, right? Mm -mm, can't multitask. Um, so when we see this color, that means that all the other wavelengths of light that are going to be interacting with it that can make it through, you know, the safety net of our electromagnetic surroundings on our planet uh, <laughs> that are coming into contact with it are actually engaging with this. So if we have like our visible light spectrum and we have a very small amount of it here that is actually visible to human eye and we're just taking a very tiny slice out of it right, that is orange, the rest of that, whatever can make it in into, you know, this interaction specifically, is what's being absorbed by this particle of pigment. And when that happens, a lot of the higher energy levels, when we start getting like UV and forward, right, might as well try to make that actually a V, um, ends up creating so much energy with this that it cleaves through multiple interactions, that connection right there. And cleaves means it's just, you know, cuts it, severs it. So what we're left with is two very distinct chemicals <laughs> that um, like are not healthy for the human body. I mean, one of them is gonna be worse than the other, of course, but um, this is where the problem comes in, right? When these two sections are separated, they are creating, uh, through, that, through that chemistry, that, that light interaction, they're creating known harmful substances that go into the body. And this is also why you don't see color anymore. Because that connection is, is, has been severed, the ability of that particle of pigment to actually produce this orange tone is gone. Because that's, that's where the light energy interacted with, to give you that very small sliver of visible light. Without it there, those things are free to roam the body or, in some cases, even stay put. With certain other colors, when this cleavage occurs, what happens is the byproducts of it may not be easily absorbed into the body but they just sit there. So now you have pigment that has no ability to produce color taking up space in the skin. And so when you go to repack over top of it or recolor it, more often than not, you're gonna see a diluted effect of the color that's there because even though the pigment isn't in the skin anymore, air quote, because it's not producing color, there still are particles taking up space inside the skin. So you have a lessened amount of like pigment that you can actually put in the space because it's already occupied with something. Hopefully that makes sense. 
This is a problem. If you see colors that fade very quickly, it is usually because they are organic in nature, and organic is carbon-based. We see carbon chains and uh, carbon rings that are going to be <laughs> attached to a substance. These are usually a little bit more frail depending on the actual pigment tone that you're using. Now, orange is really specific, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I theorize or hypothesize or assume, presume, that because there's only one single uh, value of this color that's going to be pumped out, the inverse, if we're thinking about those, you know, contrasting colors, where it's going to be absorbing a whole lot of the opposite, which would be those, you know, ultraviolets, etc., which is also the highest energy source that we have, it means that it's going to be really breaking apart quite a bit. We're going to see the inverse function of anything when applied to space inside of physics, right? Sometimes, most of the time. Um, so if we have a very strong orange that's coming out and it's just, it's a crazy orange, then what's the inverse color that that most likely is going to be interacting with to, you know, free up those energy valences, right? That's going to be our purples and the ultraviolets, which are extremely damaging, right? UV rays are known to break down stuff. And in this case, with pigment degradation, those UVs are a lot, right? So that's it in a nutshell. We can uh, go into specific pigments if you want. Let me know in the comments. Pass that. Buy a hat. Support the show. Listen to the podcast. We're adding it to YouTube. We didn't put up the video because who wants to see my face any more than this? Anyways, that's enough for today. It's Ryan from Better Tattooing signing off.